Hi, Gemini. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for January of 2020. This month, we've got that big pile of Capricorn planets still happening because many of these planets are slow moving and they are still in your eighth house bugging you. But other things will be moving on. And, um, and Julia has some things to say about those in particular. Are you going to start with Mars, Julia? Yeah, let's start with Mars. So uh, Mars is going to be in your seventh house of partnership for most of the month because it enters there on January 3rd. So um, this can be a really good transit for accomplishing a lot of things with a partner. Like if you have to do some, you know, combined tasks with a romantic partner or a business partner, um, because Mars is where we put our energy. But there is a potential for having fights with a partner too, so try to get out the energy by working together on some goal if you can. Um, now the next planet I want to talk about is Venus, and she's the planet of art, beauty, and love. And she begins this month in your ninth house of international journey. So if you're single and let's say you're going on holiday this month, uh, maybe you've got some leftover vacation days from Christmas, uh, you may find a fun romance abroad. Uh, but you, if you do have a partner, then you also might want to engage in some shared new experience together because mm. new experiences expand us. And that's what the uh, ninth house is all about. So this is a really good time for going on, let's say, like a new adventure together. Then when Venus enters your 10th house of career on January 13th, um, if you're single, you might find yourself getting a crush at work. Um, but it's also a really great transit for getting along well with your boss or coworkers too. Now, uh, the next planet I want to talk about is Mercury, the planet of thinking and communicating. And Mercury begins this month in your eighth house of shared resources. So your mind may be on security needs um, at the beginning of the month, such as downsizing your debt or thinking about investments you might want to make. And then when Mercury enters your ninth house on January 16th, you're going to be in a much more philosophical mindset um, because the ninth house is the house of philosophy. And this can be a really great transit for learning something new, like a new language or getting good ideas, um, you know, for work if you're in school, uh, which is also part of the ninth house. Now, the last one I want to talk about is the sun, and the sun begins this month in your eighth house, and that's the house of transformation as well. Mm. So maybe there's some transformation that you really need to make in your life, like losing a little weight or quitting smoking, um, and your focus is really going to be on what type of personal transformation that you specifically need to do. And then the sun enters your ninth house on January 20th. And again, that's the house of higher learning. So your focus is going to be turned to trying something new or expanding yourself in some way. Um, you got some uh, news for us about the eclipse this month, Jamie? I do. Yeah. You know, I, I also feel like I should mention, um, which is that this pile of Capricorn planets has to do really uh, with Saturn and Pluto coming into a conjunction which they're doing this January, and uh, it hasn't happened. Something like this hasn't happened for about 35 years. It tends to be really big and really dramatic, and um, there's a video about it, and you really should check it because um, this is just, it's so major that it doesn't even make sense to bring it into a horoscope context. So um, you can find out about that in the 2020 news playlist because that's where um, all the, you know, sort of the giant themes for 2020 are happening um, uh, on our YouTube channel. So there are a couple of lunations, and uh, one of them is an eclipse, but I want to start by talking about January 10th, which is a really big day this month, because three things are happening that same day. One is that Mercury is... Um, having what I like to call Greater Epiphany Day. That is the day when Mercury is proceeding along direct and fast, and it conjuncts the Sun. And this is really like the opposite of Mercury retrograde. Um, so instead of getting all tangled up and uh, miscommunicating and, and, you know, all kinds of uh, messes at work, it is a time when things can move forward smoothly and uh, not effortlessly, but you know, you can make your plans, you can set your goals, you can advance your projects, and that tends to feel pretty good. 
So that is happening on January 10th, but also on January 10th we have Uranus, which uh, is in Taurus and which is going direct. And if you see that little red S right there next to Uranus, that means that Uranus has stationed because it had been retrograde. And as you see the days go by, it uh, the little S goes away because Uranus is just moving forward again. And Uranus is the planet of genius. So um, I think that there's going to be some genius that is unleashed in us all uh, on that day in particular and, and for the rest of the month too. Uh, now the third thing that's happening on the 10th is of course the lunation and this is not just a full moon which you can tell because here's the sun in Capricorn opposite to the moon in Cancer and that opposition is what makes um, a full moon, but it's also an eclipse, a lunar eclipse, and a lunar eclipse tends to be more emotional than a solar eclipse, and this lunar eclipse has a lot to do with the balancing act between should I be tough and strong and armored, or should I be soft and warm and open and available for connecting with other people, and how do I balance those things? Uh, in your particular um, situation, if you are a Gemini rising, then chances are that this moon falls in your second house, the sun falls in your eighth house, and you're going to be looking at financial themes with this. You know, are you going to be you're going to be looking at um, do I do I um, feel into my own finances? Do I uh, tenaciously hang on to my own money or do I extend my trust to others and and put on the tough armor that I need in order to engage with others and what does that trust look like so um, those should be some of the themes that are blended in with this eclipse and as eclipses can be it may be somewhat dramatic and you might want to check the video that we have about that in the January news playlist on the Pandora Astrology YouTube channel. Now the other lunation that I want to tell you about is happening on the 24th and that is a new moon in Aquarius which falls right here in your ninth house and Julia was talking about this house before it's the house of the higher mind of travel higher education growth and expansion and um, and so having a new moon there is all about the planting of new seeds and new beginnings. So this could be a time for the birthing of some really big ideas, a large scale perspective, um, or a journey of some kind, uh, or a growth trajectory. So look for opportunities to plant that kind of seed during this um, new moon. I think that's everything I have to say. If, if anything that I said here made you think that you might want a reading and you asked me for my recommendation, well, I would say that the emphasis here on the house of transformation and also on the house of growth would suggest to me that a natal and transit reading is probably the, the best way to go because that's one that you can customize to your needs. You can ask any kind of question in a natal reading and the transits will tell you uh, what kind of paths you're on and, uh, and the best ways to move forward on them. Well, that's all we have for today. Thanks for watching, Gemini. We love making horoscopes for you. And uh, we'll, you'll find this horoscope on um, Pandora Astrology slash uh, dot com slash horoscope or on our YouTube channel. And, uh, and we'll see you next month around the cosmos. Bye. Bye. -bye.